right? So when say when we would say something is subjective, that you are speaking from the eye. So I was saying that's where I would that's where I would begin off. That's that's really the beginning. That particular question. That's why this vid really caught my attention. You know, by beginning beginning off and saying just how much how much do you love the truth? Do you really love the truth? Or are you just curious? Do you love it enough to build, actually to rebuild your understanding, your overstanding to conform to a reality that does not fit your current beliefs or ideas and doesn't make you feel 100% happy. Do you love truth enough to continue seeking even when it hurts, when it, when it reveals aspects of yourself or of, of human society or of the universe? that are shocking, complex, and disturbing, or humbling, glorious, and amazing. Or even when truth is far, far, far beyond the human mind itself, or even human reasoning. So the question is, just how much do you love the truth? The question is, how much do... We love the truth. How much do I and I love the truth? It's a good question to ask ourselves. It's a good question to start with. And that 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 right there, which I put in my own words right there, it kind of reminds me of um, Second Thessalonians, Miss um, Ghana. But it, you know, but that first part, the first part, just how much do you love the truth? That's like an excellent discipleship question, uh, you know, um, kind of a rhetorical question, but still an excellent discipleship question. Do you really love the truth, or are you just curious? This is what I get sometimes. I get that some are just kind of curious, like, well, what do you think about it, kind of, in a sense. You know, and, and on that sort of level, it's, it's not for me to pontificate about what I think or what I feel or whatever like that. But the question is, how much do you love the truth? Do you really love the truth, or are you just curious? Do you love it enough, and here's a key right here, to rebuild your understanding to, key word right here, to conform, to conform to a reality that doesn't fit like one's current paradigm and doesn't make them so-called, at least at first, feel 100% happy. Now, check this out with that word conform. Looking at that word conform, right, I back this up right here, and, and let's find conform, right, conform in the Bible, or in the King James version of the Bible. I mean, this is the first level, of course, but there's three times in the King James version. There's in Romans, twice, and in, um, I think this is Philippians, um, Philippians once, right? The first time is Romans 8 and 29. It says, for whom he did foreknow, right? For whom he did foreknow, whom Abba did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed, get that, conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. In other words, the, the son is that firstborn among many brethren, but whom Abba, Father, and, and, and this is not even to say God. God is a certain level. God is actually, oh, it's interesting, because really, um, because of how God has been used and this whole idea of God, that the true God should not even be called God. I mean, the true God, because of how it's been so, um, you know, misused and with idols and all types of even hyperdimensional entities and demons, you know, how, you know, anybody, anything, almost like, it's like when you say God today, it's like saying idol today, but when, we, when we're speaking here, we're speaking about Father, which is a whole different relationship. You know, because most folks can say, okay, God is the creator, and they're talking about God the creator, and he created, and they're looking around at the creation and say, look what he created, he created you and me, created the, the, the birds and the bees, the fish, the dogs, the trees, you know what I mean? 
that really would ones you see it's it's a the new birth where ones can refer to speak to and communicate with the true and living God, the one that Jesus Christus discloses us in the word as Abba, as Father. You know what I'm saying? As Abba. We're not we're not looking at a picture, you know what I'm saying? Even this point is almost at the point where you must put away pictures or image or even what you think of as magic, what you think of what you heard about Jesus Christ and deal with the word. You know what I'm saying? Because it's thy word, right? It says thy word is what? Is eminent. Thy word is illness. That word is truth. It's that word, but see, I, see when we get to the word, right? It's like getting to um, um, you call almost like a source code. You know, it's almost like looking at web pages and not looking at all the pictures and how it's designed, and you're just looking at source code. For most folks, normally looking at, you know what I mean? It's like the old style computer where it wasn't, you know, Windows or whatever like that. You know, it wasn't an icon you click on or whatever like that. You had to actually know the code. You had to look at the code. For some folks, it was very, very interesting. And they called it, what did they call it then? They called it logic. They even referred to it as logic, right, which is derived from logos, which is the constant word, right? Now, the second conform is in Romans 12 and 2. So the first conform is Romans 8 and 29. The second conform is Romans 12 and 2, which says, And be not conformed, right, to this world. Right? And the question, do you love it? Do you love truth enough to rebuild your understanding, your overstanding, to conform to reality that doesn't fit your current belief or belief system or paradigm and doesn't make you feel so-called 100% or some say 120%? happy, but here in Romans 12 and 2 it says, and be not conformed to what? This world, this seclusion, but be transformed by what? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may what? Prove, not believe, not guess, but that you might what? Prove, keyword, prove, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, right? That perfect will of Ha Elohim Baruchu, of our Father, of Abba. Now, what's interesting in this video right here, it actually touches on many of these key words, like if you digest the scripture, it touches on many of these key words, right? And, and they have grinded through all of this to come to that conclusion by research. And so now, in I and I study of the scripture, right, in the proper hermeneutics, when we watch this video, we can see that they're right on, on point, or they're in the right direction. Even though they did not mention religion, well, they mentioned religion, but they didn't mention, like, anything particular from the Bible. They didn't use that as, because the Archons like to use um, Judeo-Christianity, right? They like to use that religious ideology and even the religious iconography. You understand? Because that 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 is most effective with most people. It cuts through everything else, generally speaking, with people who are conformed to the world. But what this word says, be not conformed to this world. So in Romans 8 and 29, it says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed. That means that there is a destination. There's a time when so we find ourselves you know, at a certain time, um, waking up or awakening. And we think about it, it's like we, we almost always knew we would come to this point. But it wasn't really clear because he already foreknew us. He knew us from before. So he already predestined us to be what? Conformed to what? The image of his son. And we're not speaking about the outer image. We're speaking about the inner image because the word is that engrafted word. You know, so it's the inner image. And we're speaking about Tawahedo or the Tuahimeno, right? And so now the second verse, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. They're talking about these alien abductions in this, right? And they're saying that how these alien hyperdimensional demonic entity archons or whatever they call themselves, right? How they always, um, since people have this idea about peace and love and 
goodness and hope and happiness, they always come along using this good idea. But good can be a very um a very subjective you know, good is very subjective. Subjective mean I. Like if you look at a sentence, I went to the store. What's the subject? I. What's the object? The store. What's the verb? Went. Right? So when so when we say something is subjective that you are speaking from the I, but what does Yeshua teach us? What does Adonai teach us? He says, um, if anyone would, would come to me, right, they must what? We deny themselves. So they must deny this subjective, well, I think, I believe, I this, I that, I, I, I. You know, we have to actually chill that. You know what I'm saying? And then the next thing is the second thing. Pick up their cross. Now, whether we look at it through, through the, the, the tree of life and the cross, which will be at the heart chakra, and whether we look at the cross when one gets to the point of their faith, when they are crossed between the desires of the flesh and the desires of the spirit. And they're conflicted between these two. They're like, well, I'm, I'm trying to be um, godly or holy, but now I, I notice I still got this flesh. You know, with, I, I got these desires. I got these lusts. I got, and, and they're feeling guilty. And, and the hyperdimensional demonic entities will use that. You know what I'm saying? We'll tap into that. And it's especially, like they said in this document, so that knowledge protects, but ignorance endangers. You know, knowledge protects us, but the ignorance endangers us. That's why, you know, the word, the word, the word, and study, show yourself approved, our, 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 our mainstay. That's what it's right here to prove. So ones who doesn't, do not, one who, one who says they're in Yeshua or in Jesus or in the Jesus Christos, whatever their denomination or whatever kind of Christian one calls it, they, they say so. And they are conformed to this world, and they are untra not transformed. They haven't renewed their minds. They haven't proven anything. You understand? They haven't proven the good. You understand? They are unacceptable with the Almighty. They are, not, they, are, they are still in their imperfect state, and they're not doing the will of God. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is how I look at this verse, why I start to really meditate on it. Okay, you read it so-called as a forward, in the sense, in, in, the, in the normal way of reading it. Then you say, well, if it says, be not conformed, right, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then those people who are conformed to the world, right, they can, they're not transformed. So they may say, I'm born again or whatever, but they're not really born again because they haven't renewed their mind. They still are being, in a sense, they haven't heard what Christ said, um, where he says, if anyone would come after me or anyone would be my disciple, they must deny themselves. They are still looking at it subjectively. Even if you speak the word of God to them and they say, I'm in the word of God, they, must, they use an excuse to say, oh, well, we're not in the church right now, or this is not Sunday, you understand, I don't have my bonnet on, you know what I mean? Or, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll throw out kind of, um, um, it's like uh, when when a plane, a military plane, is dropping bombs or whatever like that, and it's about to leave the area in order to avoid anti-aircraft anti batteries, it will shoot out like some flares or whatever like that. You know, so that's what they're doing. They're shooting that out, and they're about to leave the area. They're about to spin out, right? But now let's just hear, hear, this, hear this more. Philippians, right, 3 and 10 now says this. Philippians 3 and 10 says, that I may, I may know him, right, that I may know him, that I may what, that I may know, now there's more to this, but I'm just touching on the conform, right, right, um, that I might know him, and then when you read this, don't read this like, oh, this is Haradi Apollos, this is the Apostle Paul, no, you have to read this, that this is me, you know what I'm saying, Right, and you have to you have to be in the role, be in that that I may know him. Not believe is belief is necessary in that sense. Faith is necessary, kind of in the door. You know what I'm saying? But now that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Wow, and the power of his resurrection. Ain't that what it's it's all about? Right, and the fellowship. Right? The fellowship of what? Of his sufferings. The fellowship of his sufferings. That means like we're brother, brothers in, you know, brothers in arm, um, brothers in suffering, but enduring together. You know what I'm saying? And enduring with others. 
But see, when they, people are unconformed, they are, or, or they conform to the world, even their fellow Christian brother or sister, they don't really care. On Sundays, yeah, in church, yeah, they're going to play nice, whatever. But the fellowship of his sufferings, being made, what it says, being made conformable, right, to his death. Well, you know, hello, are you there? Is there my there? You know what I mean? There, it, it, you know what I mean? Folks are folks are dipping out on you at that point right there. What? Being made conformable to his death. You, you know what I'm saying? And um and that's that hidden sephirot on the tree. That's that hidden sephirot right there. That's the crossroads right there. You know what I'm saying? They try to keep you in the lower right, the lower beings try to keep you below the heart chakra keep you on the genital area, the sexual area. And nothing wrong with sex in proper order and cl and cleansiness, you know what I'm saying? But they try to keep you on that, you know, like where one is being driven in a sense. You know, you know, they try to keep you on the on the on, on the on on the stomach level. You know what I'm saying? On what you on, you know, what you eat. You know, it's keep you in these lower in these lower so called three chakras. You understand? Or or like they say a lot in psychology, um, when they call people anal, you anal, anal retentive. You know what I mean? You know, or people say, one's got penis envy. You know what I'm saying? Or one say, you acting like a pussy. You know, I mean, I mean, all these things are the lower, you see, the lower chakras, right? Then you have the abdomen, right? And then you have the solar plexus, which is very interesting because the abdomen is the breath. Whenever you get nervous or scared or afraid or or, or, or something happening in your in your spirit, if you're conscious, notice your breath. And most people don't even most of us, unless we are conscious or we've been disciplined, we don't even breathe right. And we're talking about spirituality. And we don't even breathe right. Spirit as spiritus acts a Spanish speaking person. Spiritus is breath. You understand? And there's nothing that teaches anyone. How, and and the interesting because when you see in some of these churches and you hear how they be, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't want to go. I know, I know, I put myself there because I have to get myself in a state of mind. I don't want to deal with any kind of other spirits or whatever like that. But when you hear how some of these people in church be going on, it's just in the nigger church, the black church. You can tell that's not a holy spirit, but that's that's the that's the style of it. You know what I'm saying? That's the style. Now, one more thing about the truth. This is sum this up about the truth. You know what I'm saying? Asking the question from Bet um, Medjamaria, um, um, just how much do you love truth? Do you really love truth, or are you just curious? If you look in Second Thessalonians, Hulatenya, whether Thessalonica, Saroch, Meraf, Hulet, Hulet, not to go through the whole thing, but let's sum up right here. Where it says it says uh, it says in verse nine. Well, actually, it's four verses, but here in Bamarinya, they kind of couple together. You know what I'm saying? Nine and ten is coupled together, and eleven and twelve is coupled together. So, and in the King James, you might read one verse, but remember, there's a comma, there's a comma, or there's a colon. So the idea continues. So it says, even him. Whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. I guess it's a lot about this new age, extraterrestrial, open open up, open up your mind, peace and love. You, you know, all this like just 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 to get ready to get abducted. You understand? It says with all deceivableness, right? Deceivableness, this is a time of transformation, a time of change, but it is also a time of deception. Right, but but that, but you don't hear many folks telling people about that, right? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, when I see the word righteous, or when I see the word righteous, that is Yeshua, that's the Yeses. Whenever you see the word unrighteous, that is anti Yeses. In other words, a, a righteous is Christos, is Mashiach. Unrighteous is Antichrist. You know, because we have no right. See, we don't have any um, 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 subjective righteousness. But we gain that by focusing on the our main, the object of I and I righteousness, and and eating, and eating. You understand? Know and eating that word, and eating of 
that of the spirit of of of, of the of the spirit. What does the Bible call him? It says that in resurrection he is a life giving spirit. He's a life giving spirit, right? So it says right here in for the deceivableness of unrighteousness and then that perish. All these signs, powers, lying ones and here's the key, because they received not the love of the truth. Verse ten. Because they received not the love of the truth. And we just did a um we we did a, a a sermon and a teaching on this area in one of the previous one of the recent vids and everything. That they might be saved. So they talk about they saved but they they haven't received the the love of the truth, like it says right here. Do you really love the truth enough to rebuild your understanding, to conform to a reality that does not fit your current beliefs, you understand, or paradigms, and doesn't make one feel 100% happy? Do you love truth enough to continue seeking, seeking, you understand, act, seek, knock, seeking when it hurts, you understand, when it reveals aspects of yourself? For others, human society, or the universe that are shocking, complex, and disturbing, or humbling, glorious, and amazing, or even when truth is far beyond human mind itself. Just how much do you love the truth, and we have to ask ourselves and each one, how much do I love the truth? But think about this verse right here, Second Thessalonians, right, chapter 2. Verse 10, verse 9 and 10, right, it says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that what that perish. They made a point in this video that if people can't see, like, 9-11 inside job and, and how these the buildings were controlled demolition, if they can't see that the whole Al-Qaeda, you know what I'm saying, Al-Qaeda, you know, Al-Qaeda thing is the United States government and so forth and so on, part of one of that project, black ops, special projects or whatever like that. If they can't see these things, Right, and, and, and in fact, even Sister Bisa had said it the other day when I was on the phone, and I was like, wow, she had a perception. But she said, um, when I said, if they don't see these things, you know what I'm saying? Like, if they can't see these things on earth, how can it be heavenly things? If they can't hear these, these basic examples and, and receive what's right before them, then what is hidden from them in the hyper dimensions and the higher realms, you know what I'm saying, or the more rakik level, how can they know these things? You know, it's like if they don't see the shadow, of they, I like they don't see the shadow. If they don't trace the shadow, how can they see what has projected the shadow? In other words, right? But it says right here, because, it, gives you, it tells you why, because they received not. They didn't Kabbalah. They didn't receive this. Receive what? The love of the truth. Ask the question, right? Just how much do you love the truth? Do you really love the truth, or are you just curious? Most who are just curious don't receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They just want to hear some stuff. Oh, yeah, right, 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 so and so, you know, right? Wandering stars, in a sense. It says, You didn't know then? Wow. Verse 11 and 12, just to, just to complete this right here. 11 and 12, Second Thessalonians. Silizi mikniyat ba'unet yalamenu negargin be amet des yulacho ye neberu hulu for dinendik ebelu. Hasetin, hasetin, yam nu zen. Egziyaru her ye sihitetin asharar ye likabachuan. It says, and for this cause, and this 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 caught me. This took me uh, when I first read it and started to really um, prove it and study it and research it and try to understand it for myself. It, it, it made me like I had to kind of like uh, not step back, but it, you know, like 
I don't really take a look, a stock of it. It says, for this cause, if you just read the verse by itself, verse 11, for this cause, God, right, um, shall send them strong delusion that they might, that they should, excuse me, believe a lie. Wow. That it says, because they did not do what? Receive, right? That to go, you have to connect that with verse 10. It's like the other preacher that used to preach, that he started speaking about uh, Christ is black. Um, I mean, that Christ, well, actually, he did, but he first began with Adam, right? And he's now on, on, on I haven't seen him around there. I know I happen to remember, if I can remember his name, either Crenshaw or somebody like that. But um, he was saying in one of his uh, teachings, it's like how he taught the Bible and go verse by verse and go through it and, you know, get into some of the words, you know, the context of it. He was saying, whenever you see therefore, you've heard me say this before, whenever you see therefore in the Bible, you got to stop for a moment and see if you know what the there is for is therefore. You know, when somebody says such and such and such and such, therefore. Now, we know a lot of folks are, you know, the language has been dumbed down by, you know, the Internet and, 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 and texting and everything like that. So the language has been horribly. And that's also a trick, too, because the word. You know what I'm saying? Communication, ideas, thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Because energy. You know what I mean? It's energy. You know, words are energy, right? But anyway, it says, for this cause, because they did not receive the love of the truth, the love of the truth. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we said right here. Do you love the truth or do you love truth? They did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved that they might be saved. So salvation is connected with loving the truth. You cannot love a lie and be saved, according to Abba's word and according to the logos, uh, Abba's logic, <laughs> in other words, right? And so it's for this cause, Abba or Egeziali or the sustainer shall send them, the true God will send them strong delusion. Will send them what kind of delusion? Strong delusion. Send them strong delusion, right? Um, well, well, here it doesn't say strong delusion. It actually says, "Exiavir yesiritetin asherar yilika yilika bachual." In other words, the the work it's use the same word as the working of Satan, where it says, "In the Satan asherar." No, right here it says, "Yesiritetin asherar asherar," right? So it's the working. You know what I'm saying? The work. How, how can be working? Not just one work, but the the working, right? So so we'll send them the working of, of error, strong delusion. We'll send them strong delusion. Yes, tetin asarar, or the working of error. You know what I'm saying? Of error, right? That they should do what? Believe a lie. Hesetin yamnu zen. You know what I'm saying? That they should believe a lie. That they, that they all might be damned. Wow. Damned. They're really already damned. Because it says that, that he, who, he who believes and baptizes is saved, but he who does not believe is already damned. It says that in the Word, right? But that they all, so it's not like he's doing this. He's, he's left in their damned, in their, in their goddamn situation, right? That they all might be damned. Who what? Believe or accept it not as true, right? The unet yalamenu, right? Who 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 did not accept as true the truth? You know what I'm saying? Or who did not who did not believe or exercise faith, right? On the truth. But here's the key, and here's what sums it up right here. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Had pleasure in being apart from the word, the logos of Abba, being apart from um, Jesus Christos Ketach, and being apart from the word, uh, the the way, the truth, and the life, right? But they had pleasure. That's like that, that key there, and emphasize it. They have pleasure, right? It says, Ba'amet, Ba'amet, Desilacho, Yeneburuhulu, right? For dinner, indeed, Ebelu. Right, so then judgment, you know what I'm saying, judgment, that they would receive that. So it kind of explains right there a lot, you know what I'm saying, a lot to us of, of what's what, why is why, you know what I'm saying, um, 
and, and, and so forth and so on. You know what I mean? Explains. I mean, there's more to that, but this is just what's connected with that key. I'll call that, like, that's the first question, probably the first, I mean, yeah, the first statement and question. The Medjamaria, just how much do you love the truth? Do you really love the truth, or are you just curious? You understand? Do you love the truth enough to um, renew your mind or to re and rebuild your understanding and your overstanding to conform to reality, to conform to the image of his son that doesn't fit with one's current present paradigm beliefs, uh, you know, and doesn't make you feel 100 120 or whatever percent happy, do you love the truth enough? And this is the key right here, to continue. Remember in John chapter 6, verse 66, that many had got offended with Yeshua HaMoshi and they turned around and they didn't walk after him anymore? That's another example, like 666, which some people have pointed out, which, you know, you can you can get some sense out of That's not gospel or or doctrine, or theology, but it's interesting that in chapter 6, verse 66, there was ones who were disciples, but they turned around because they were offended. In other words, they didn't love the truth enough to continue seeking when it hurt. It's like when when when, when Adonai called or said to uh, Petros, um, get behind me, Satan. Most folks would say, oh, you call me a devil, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? But do you love the truth enough to continue seeking, even when it hurts or it seems to hurt? You know what I'm saying? Because really, on a certain level, we can get into that. It's really not that the truth is hurting. There's another demon that does, there's, a, there's a entities that don't want to let go. So they're making you feel because you still are plugged in. You're not completely unplugged. You know what I'm saying? So do you love the truth enough to continue seeking, right, the truth, even when it, the truth hurts? When it, the truth, reveals aspects of yourself, of your ego, your ego, or human society, other egos, or the universe, you know what I'm saying, that are shocking, complex, disturbing, or humbling, glorious, and amazing, or even when it is, well, when the truth is far beyond human mind itself, just how much do you, and do we, and each of us must ask, how much do I love the truth? It is a very good question for each dec uh, more for each disciple to ask themselves. Because Second Thessalonians show us the consequence, you understand, of not. At least it gives us one glimpse right there. So um, give thanks. I just wanted to share this and, and touch on this because this part had me meditating. You know, had me meditating on this part. So I said, it's interesting. They didn't mention God or Christ or Jesus or whatever in, in here. They didn't speak against it either, but they were saying this is the research and this is where the research has led us. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's a good presentation. It's, it's presented in truth. And there's some other elements in this as well. Mm. And this thing is called, what is this thing called right here? Um, what is it called? Oh, UFOs. UFOs and Alien Contact 2012. Yeah. Curiosity. Curiosity, yeah, well, and, 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 yeah, and, and, yeah and, 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 and that's exactly what people, you, you see, that's a, that's a, um, that's a programming right there. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm oh. <laughs> So I was saying that's where I would that's where I would begin off. That's that's really the beginning. That particular question. That's why this vid really caught my attention. You know, by beginning beginning off and saying just how much, how much do you love the truth? Do you really love the truth? Or are you just curious? Do you love it enough to build, actually to rebuild your understanding, your overstanding to conform to a reality that does not fit your current beliefs or ideas and doesn't make you feel 100% happy. 
Do you love truth enough to continue seeking even when it hurts, when it when it reveals aspects of yourself or of of human society or of the universe that are shocking, complex and disturbing or humbling, glorious and amazing. Or even when truth is far far, far beyond the human mind itself or even human reasoning. So the question is, just how much do you love the truth? The question is, how much do we love the truth? How much do I and I love the truth? It's a good question to ask ourselves. It's a good question to start with. And that 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 right there, which... I put in my own words right there. It kind of reminds me of um, Second Thessalonians, um, Miss Ghana. But it, you know, but that first part, the first part, just how much do you love the truth? That's like an excellent discipleship question. Uh, you know, um, a kind of a rhetorical question, but still an excellent discipleship question. Do you really love the truth, or are you just curious? This is why I get sometimes. I get that some. I'm just kind of curious, like, well, what do you think about it, kind of, in a sense? You know, and, and on that sort of level, it's, it's not for me to pontificate about what I think or what I feel or whatever like that. But the question is, how much do you love the truth? Do you really love the truth, or are you just curious? Do you love it enough, and here's a key right here, to rebuild your understanding, right? So when, say, when we would say something is subjective, that you're speaking from the eye. So I was saying that's where I would, that's where I would begin off. That's, that's really the beginning, that particular question. That's why this vid really caught my attention, you know, by beginning, beginning off and saying just how much, how much do you love the truth? Do you really love the truth? Or are you just curious? Do you love it enough to build, actually to rebuild your understanding, your understanding to conform to a reality that does not fit your current beliefs or ideas and doesn't make you feel 100% happy, 